Here begins our next lesson in quantum mechanics and something known as matter waves. I have my notepad open to the top of page 9 where it says quantum mechanics and matter waves. We're going to need our calculator and um, you know, just an opportunity to work through some example problems. Let me give you a little background. It says, you know, weird things have been going on in our lesson so far and, and thinking about energy being absorbed or emitted in packages known as quantum, given us the title of our uh, latest atomic theory, the quantum mechanical model, these little quantum of energy uh, known as electrons. You know, light behaves as waves and particles. We start to expand our belief into the same for electrons traveling as waves and particles. It was in 1924 that Louis de Broglie, a French graduate student, uh, asked an important question. He said, you know, given that light behaves as waves and matter, can particles of matter behave as waves? And indeed, he proved so mathematically. The application applied to electrons. Electrons, of course, are particles. They do have a mass, but they also behave as waves. He derived an equation that described the wavelength of a moving particle. The wavelength, lambda, is equal to h, that's Planck's constant, divided by mass, measured in a kilogram, and velocity. Now velocity is speed. Mass times velocity is known as momentum. So the bottom of our equation here, wavelength equal Planck's constant divided by the momentum of this object. The object, of course, being considered is the electron. Notice that the mass must be in a kilogram Alrighty, and then velocity with speed typically in like a meter per second. So if we begin to predict that all matter exhibits wave-like motions. You certainly have seen waves, uh, wave motion in water perhaps, and are, they're generally unaware that wave motion is all matter. But at the uh, quantum level, the motion depends on the size of the object. So wavelengths of objects visible to the unaided eye are just so small to measure. For instance, the mass of a, a specific electron might be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. With something that small, something that small, it's easy enough to consider that moving in terms of a wave. Alrighty, so the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by mass times velocity. Mass times velocity is known as momentum. The mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams, moving nearly at the speed of light, it would have a wavelength about 2 times 10 to the negative 10th centimeters. De Broglie's prediction that matter would exhibit both wave and particle properties is summarized by the following two statements. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, this slide we just read together. The mass of a single electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. Now remember, if we were to put that into our equation, we'd have to switch it to a kilogram. Moving nearly at the speed of light gives it a wavelength of 2 times 10 to the negative 10th centimeters. Extremely small. But his prediction is put down into two statements. De Broglie's prediction that matter would exhibit both wave and particle properties is summarized by the two statements. And these would need to be recorded into your notes. Statement 1. Classical mechanics adequately describes the motions of bodies much larger than the atoms that they compromise, comprise. Classical mechanics adequately describes the motions of bodies much larger than the atoms they comprise. Number two says the field of quantum mechanics describes the motions of subatomic particles at atoms and waves. These particles gain or lose energy in packages known as quanta. A quantum of energy, the smallest amount of energy packet that's either absorbed or released by an electron. 
quantum mechanics not found in classical mechanics is the uncertainty principle. That uncertainty principle is just, it, it's called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. When something is moving so fast, you cannot precisely locate it at any one moment in time. It is impossible to know exactly both the velocity and the position of the particle at the same time. The more precise the velocity is measured, the less precise the position has become, and conversely would be true as well. This uncertainty principle is very much part of quantum mechanics. With classical mechanics, we can, because things are large enough to see and to handle and to measure velocity, but at a subatomic level, we cannot know with certainty both the location and the momentum of an object. This is known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Let's take a look at some examples in our note pack. Our first example that uses something called matter waves. What is the wavelength of an electron with a speed of 5.97 times 10 to the 6 meters per second? The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. We had just written that a moment ago. And Planck's constant given to us as 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. One joule is equivalent as one kilogram meter squared over second squared. This is reminding us why when we use our formula that we must use kilograms in terms of our um, in terms of our uh, our mass. So let's take a moment and kind of figure out what it is we want to know and what it is we're given. Some of the relationships we just learned, the wavelength can be found by taking Planck's constant, which is h when we use that, divided by mass times velocity. Mass must be measured in a kilogram. Here we have 9.11 times 10 to the 20 or negative 28 grams. And we understand that there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So just to kind of help us see the mass that we need to use, 9.11 e negative 28. We still have to slide that decimal over three more spots to get it into a kilogram. So 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms is the mass of our electron. Planck's constant is given to us 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. The mass of our electron in a kilogram unit, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And the velocity is given to us, the speed is what that term is, 5.97 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. We will end up canceling units to find wavelength. Wavelength will come out for us in a meter. So on our calculators, start by hitting Planck's constant, 6.63 e negative 34, divided by the product of the mass of our electron times its velocity. Mass times velocity is what we know as momentum. And our wavelength is 1.22 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. Using Planck's constant, dividing by the momentum of our electron, mass times velocity, we measured the wavelength of a moving electron. Electrons are indeed particles. They are so small, quantum mechanics has defined those particles to behave more like waves. Waves, of course, we understand, uh, can be measured if in a meter. 
Let's try another example. Number two, the electron microscope has been widely used to obtain highly magnified images of biological and other types of materials. When an electron is accelerated through a particular potential field, the potential means it has an electrical current going through it, it attains a speed of three point, excuse me, 9.38 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. What is the characteristic wavelength of this electron? Again, solving for wavelength, using Planck's constant, 6.63 .63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. The mass of our electron, we found 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And this time the velocity is 9.38 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Let's solve for the wavelength of this moving electron. Planck's constant, 6.63 E negative 34, divided by the product of the mass of our electron and its velocity to the sixth power there. Planck's constant divided by the product of the mass of our electron in a kilogram times its velocity in a meter per second. In this wavelength, 7.76 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. Using these formulas are quite simple, just kind of a plug and chug value there. Alrighty. This ends the lesson on quantum mechanics and matter waves, finding wavelengths using Planck's constant and the momentum of our electrons. You should pause the video lessons here, and when ready, uh, start up with the quantum mechanical model with quantum numbers. Our next topic there will be quantum numbers. Um, at this time, you have plenty of ammunition to start some of that uh, recommended homework or even some multiple choice questions that are along the lines of Planck's constant problems.